Hi, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. So I read a total of seven books in May and a total of 2,462 pages. I was really pleased with my reading month. I managed to read um, four of the Baby's Pride shortlist and a few other things in between. So um, yeah, a great reading month for me in May. So let's jump in to what I read. The first book that I picked up in May was The Dark Circle by Linda Grant. Um, all of the Baby's Prize shortlist books I've done an individual review for, which I'll link in the card symbols above, and I also posted a wrap-up video on my channel where I talked about my favourites and what my prediction was for the winner. Um, by the time this video goes up, the winner will have been announced, so it'll be interesting to see whether um, the winner was what I thought it was going to be or not, so make sure that you check out those videos. Um, so I'm not going to talk much about the Baby's Pro Shortlist books here, but this one I gave um, three stars, I think 3.5 stars, something like that. Um, this is set in post-war Britain, it tells the story of uh, twins that come from East London who develop tuberculosis and are sent to a sanatorium in Kent to um, get better probably no, to be treated is probably a better way of looking at it. Um, this looks at uh, the idea of what post-war post Britain was like, um, it looks at the idea of how diseases like tuberculosis were um, treated, the beginnings of the NHS and what that was like and it also looks at um, relationships between classes. I did quite like this book, uh, it was interesting, it had lots of topics in here that I was sort of enthralled by so yeah I ended up giving it three stars. The next book that I read in May was Stay With Me by Aobami Adebayo. This um, is the, another Bailey shortlist uh, prize book um, this tells the story of um, a couple in Nigeria, um, Yajidi and Akin. Um, at the beginning of the book they've been trying for a child for a while and um, Akin's family decide that it's time to do something about it and they would like him to marry a second and have a second wife. Um, and basically this is all about the implications of that, what happens, um, how you know their, rela their relationship um, and what happens as a result of that, it's about um, Eugenie's uh, mental health and things like that and it raises all sorts of questions about what parenthood is about, um, traditions surrounding um, having children, um, it has Nigeria as a political back backdrop in the 1980s uh, which was really interesting to read about. This was a real page turner, I absolutely loved it. Um, this is um, Adebayo's um, debut novel, so I will definitely be picking up anything else that she publishes. I think that her writing is great, um, and I read this, I think, in the course of a day, and I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. Next up, I read Flame in the Mist by Renee Audier. Um, again, I've done an individual review for this because this came out on the 18th of May and I received a proof copy of it from a Goodreads giveaway. So I read this for, um, I wanted to read this before it came out. Um, this um, is being floated as a Mulan retelling, but it's a, a very loose, um, it's not a retelling really, it just takes some of the themes and kind of uses them in the story. This follows um, a girl called Mariko in Japan and um, at the beginning of the novel she is on her way to marry the Emperor's son, I think, um, and um, sort of lift her family up and things like that, it's sort of like a better connection. Um, but on her way there her convoy is attacked and everybody is killed apart from her. She escapes and she decides that she wants to find out what happened and she's convinced that a group called the Black Clan have, um, have carried out this attack. So she decides to dress up as a boy and try to infiltrate this gang and find out what happened and why they were trying to kill her. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I have especially enjoyed Renee Ardio's writing. She's a really, she's, she's a really beautiful writer. She, um, there were some beautiful kind of prose passages in here. Um, but also I was really enthralled by the story. It took a while to get going, I would say, the first sort of 100 pages or so. Not a lot happens. You're kind of being introduced to the characters in the world. But once you're kind of past those 100 pages, um, it really, really does get going. And it was a real page turn. It ended on a complete 
cliffhanger so I will definitely be picking up the second book. I'm not really sure whether this is a going to be a duology like her previous uh, work was or a trilogy, I don't know at the moment but it um, is certainly going to be part of some sort of series and I will definitely be picking up the second one and I gave that four stars. The next book that I picked up in May was The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is another Bailey's Prize shortlist book um, and this tells the story of um, a world in which women have the power. So it's a switched, switched gender. Yeah, I'm not really explaining it properly. Um, it takes gender roles and um, or traditional gender roles and switches them on their head. So this is sort of a dystopian book. So it's set presumably sort of in modern day and in the future um, where one day these women start to um, develop something called the power which is um, like an electrical current just here under their collarbone that they can control and electrocute people with um, and then they start sort of lots more women start getting it and it spreads and then you see the result of having sort of women in charge as it were in the world. Um, I said in my review that at the beginning of the book I thought wow yeah this is going to be good, uh, good girl power book that sort of thing but it very quickly develops into something that's quite dark um, and it just goes to show that whenever anybody has power it's something that comes with great responsibility as they say in Spider-Man and you know you have to be very careful with how you use it so um, I quite enjoyed this one it was a slow burn for me um, it's, it's described as a literary thriller um, and usually with thrillers I fly through them because I'm really sort of enjoying them and gripped in what was going on it wasn't the case with this one so much um, but I still enjoyed sort of like the um, the gender swap and, and that sort of thing and what was going on with that so I ended up giving that one three stars. Then towards the end of the month I was trying to read the last kind of couple of Bailey's Prize shortlist books and I was getting quite bogged down um, in some of the themes of them so I was picking up something lighter alongside them to kind of lighten things up as it were and uh, so I read Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abertali uh, towards the end of the month. I um, hauled this and said I got it for my birthday, I'll link my May book haul um, up in the card symbols. Um, this tells the story of Simon and at the beginning of the book he has been emailing somebody called Blue and they've been talking about um, the fact that both of them are gay. He doesn't know who Blue is but he knows that he goes to his high school um, and somebody at the beginning of the book looks over his shoulder or sort of finds out that he's been having these conversations with Blue and it's just about the fallout of that. It's very much a coming of age story, it's about growing up, the um, trials and tribulations of coming out even in modern day society. Um, I think it's a very important book for um, teenagers to read um, and I was thinking about doing a blog post on this about you know important books that teenagers should read now I might still do that um, because this is definitely one that I'll be recommending um, to my students at school um, I think it's really really important and I ended up giving that one 4.5 stars and again to kind of lighten the mood from the sort of more heavier books that I was picking up for the Bailey's Prize shortlist I read Lion by Saru Brearley. This is a non-fiction book and it tells the story of Saru and what happened to him in his life. At the age of I think five or six he got on a train and um, got lost basically and couldn't find his way home again and he was adopted by an Australian couple and taken to Tasmania um, and he grew up in Tasmania and then when he, he is older he decides that I really want, I need to find my family um, so, so he uses Google Maps in order to do that um, and um, it's not Google Maps, it's Google Earth. There's a bit bit of a difference there, Google Earth, in order to find them. And it just tells a story of how he does it, um, what it's like when he meets them again. Um, and it was really, really cool. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to picking up um, and watching the film. I've seen it recently, it's just come out um, in the UK. Um, and I think it'll be a really cool film as well. I think they've changed some details, but you know, that's just what they do when they turn things into films. Um, but yeah, this is a really cute story. Um, it's only 250 pages long and um, it didn't take me that long to read this for a few days really, um, chapter at a time. Um, and I really enjoyed that one and ended up giving that one four stars. 
And then I ended the month on a bit of a bummer, to be honest, but what can you do? I read um, The Sport of Kings by C.E. Morgan. This is another one of the Baby's Pie shortlist. And um, if you've watched my review, you already know that I absolutely hated this. I ended up giving it two stars. Um, it tells the story of the Forge family who live in Kentucky and sort of generations of their family as well as um, a black family in Cincinnati and how they're kind of like their two families into time. It's all about the fa farm, the Forge farm, and uh, Henry Forge turns the Forge farm into um, a farm that keeps, breeds and races horses. Um, but you, again you'll know if you've watched my review, I just thought this was long, overly long, convoluted and I didn't really see much point of it. Uh, it took me ages to get through and um, yeah I didn't really enjoy it at all so um, if this wins the prize, God help us. There you go guys, they were all the books that I read in May. I'd love to have a conversation with you in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think of them? Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.